Welcome back to A Clan A Day podcast. I'm your host, Colin McDonald, and today we're journeying through the complex and storied history of Clan Campbell, one of the most powerful and enduring clans in Scottish history. Clan Campbell's origins are shrouded in both myth and history, with their name and early ancestry being the subject of much debate. Some say the name Campbell is derived from the Norman knight de Campo Bello, though evidence of such a figure arriving with William the Conqueror is scarce. More compelling is the Gaelic interpretation of the name as Campbell, meaning crooked mouth, a feature attributed to a legendary ancestor, Diamid Oduin. Regardless of its origin, the Campbell name became synonymous with power, influence, and, at times, controversy in the Highlands. The earliest recorded Campbell is Gillespie, appearing in documents in 1263. By this time, the Campbells had already established themselves in the region of Argyle, a land they would come to dominate for centuries. Their ascent in power began when a Campbell married the heiress of the Oduin family, securing the lordship of Loch Awe. This marriage tied the Campbells to the ancient Gaelic nobility, allowing them to claim a lineage that blended Norman and Celtic elements, a perfect reflection of the hybrid nature of medieval Scotland. The clan's real rise began with Sir Colin Campbell, known as Carleon Moore, who lived in the late 13th century. He was knighted by King Alexander III and solidified the clan's hold on Loch Awe. His prowess and influence earned him the title Mac Caelin Moore, a name still used by the Campbell chiefs. Sir Colin's success, however, led to long-standing feuds, particularly with the MacDougalls, culminating in his death at the Battle of Red Ford in 1296. This event marked the beginning of a bitter rivalry that would influence Campbell politics for generations. During the Wars of Scottish Independence, the Campbells were staunch supporters of Robert the Bruce. Sir Neil Campbell, Carleon Moore's son, played a crucial role in Bruce's rise to power, and in return he was rewarded with extensive lands once held by Bruce's enemies. This allegiance to the Bruce family not only enriched the Campbells, but also entrenched their power in the Highlands. The Campbells' loyalty to the crown became a defining characteristic, often setting them apart from other Highland clans. As the medieval period progressed, the Campbells continued to expand their influence. By the 15th century, they had become one of the dominant forces in Scotland. Their power was further cemented when Duncan Campbell, the first Lord Campbell, married Lady Marjorie Stuart, tying the Campbells to the royal Stuart family. This alliance brought the Campbells into the upper echelons of Scottish nobility, a status confirmed when Colin Campbell was created the first Earl of Argyll in 1457. The Campbells were not just political players, they were also warriors. They played a significant role in many of Scotland's conflicts, often siding with the Crown. The second Earl of Argyll and many of his men died at the Battle of Flodden in 1513, a loss that echoed through the clan's history. Despite such setbacks, the Campbells remained resilient, continuing to expand their lands and influence. Their growing power inevitably led to conflicts with other clans, particularly the MacDonalds, the former Lords of the Isles. The rivalry between these two great clans defined much of the political landscape in the Highlands during the late medieval and early modern periods. The Campbells, with their firm loyalty to the crown, often found themselves in opposition to the MacDonalds, who were seen as a threat to royal authority. The 17th century was a turbulent time for the Campbells. The clan support for the Covenanters during the Civil War led to a series of brutal conflicts, including the infamous massacre of Glencoe 
in 1692. Although the massacre was carried out under government orders, the fact that it was led by Captain Robert Campbell of Glenlyon left a permanent stain on the Campbell name, especially in the eyes of the Macdonalds and other Highland clans. Despite these controversies, the Campbells continued to grow in power and influence. In the 18th century, they played a crucial role in suppressing the Jacobite uprisings, further solidifying their position as one of the most important clans in Scotland. The second Duke of Argyll, John Campbell, was a key figure in the defeat of the Jacobites at the Battle of Sheriffmuir in 1715, and the Campbell militia was instrumental in the final defeat of the Jacobites at Culloden in 1746. The Campbell's loyalty to the British crown brought them great rewards. The first Duke of Argyll was created a British peer and given extensive lands, including the right to oversee much of the Western Highlands. In Veraray Castle, the seat of the Dukes of Argyll became a symbol of Campbell power and remains a key part of Scotland's heritage today. Clan Campbell's story is one of ambition, loyalty and resilience, from their murky origins to their rise as one of the most powerful clans in Scotland, the Campbells have left an indelible mark on Scottish history. Their legacy is a testament to the complex and often brutal world of clan politics in the Highlands. Thank you for joining us on this deep dive into the history of Clan Campbell. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for another episode of A Clan A Day podcast. I'm Colin MacDonald and as always, go in airy and both are leet.